Having a physical disability and poor mental health is a battle many are fighting and winning. This is Hashtag I Got This. In this episode of Hashtag I Got This, finding purpose by helping others, a mysterious virus paralyzes a woman's legs, but not her resilience, and a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis changes another woman's priorities for a fulfilling life. With the wind on her face and the blue sky above, Nicole bikes the winding trail through the trees along the South Saskatchewan River in Saskatoon. Not exactly the safest activity with the difficulty she faces, but she loves it, and Nicole no longer shies away from a challenge. My name is Nicole Hoffman. I'm 49 years old, and I was diagnosed with MS seven years ago. The diagnosis was made quickly after Nicole suddenly lost vision overnight. It was terrifying. It's terrifying. Um, not only losing vision and, and just your whole world changes. My right eye is completely blind and my left eye, I do have a high prescription. Uh, so it is extremely difficult to see anything right now. Um, if to look out, I see just, just blobs of, of things. I do need um, special tools in order to read a book or um, just go about my day-to-day -day activities. Multiple sclerosis is unpredictable. Its progression often uncertain. Nicole spent an unhealthy amount of time researching the disease and all that could happen. It took a toll on my mental health without question. I went into a severe depression um, on the couch, <laughs> in bed, and just had no, I, I felt I had no purpose. For, for sure for a year. I didn't care about anything. I was just trying to navigate and heal from the diagnosis and heal from the shock of losing my eye. Nicole stepped away from everything, even her career as a successful realtor. So a high profile job, just having the nicest car, the nicest home, and once diagnosed with MS, none of that matters. Like the first thing you wake up with is the thought of your health. And the last thing that you go to bed with is the thought of your health. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Nicole's parents have supported her the best way they can. It's still upsetting for her dad, Dave, to remember his daughter fading away. In the first, I would say almost two years, she was dealing with all the different things that were happening and trying to adjust. But then it was very evident that, uh, as I call, <clears throat> her inner strength took over. So, and that was a blessing because then she just decided that she wasn't, she was going to live with it, not have her, you know, dictate to her. Nicole isn't sure what gave her the spark to get out of bed one day and return to life. She calls it taking her power back. I needed to accept uh, the diagnosis and the vision loss and to grieve, and it was okay to do that. But then after that time was over, I had to be me again. And that meant some changes. Nicole chose a completely different life path. Against the wishes of a worried neurologist and family, she hopped on a plane to Bali, Indonesia. I was launching a jewelry company. That was my, my goal. It's something that I have thought about doing for years and years and years. Uh, once diagnosed with MS, I thought to myself, I have to change my careers. I have to get out of this, this stressful profession and do something that I love. Before she got very far on that trip, Nicole had an MS flare-up, extreme vertigo where the world spins around you. She handled it. She gained more confidence and understanding of her disease. And this first trip to Bali became one of many, turning her life around. I met jewelers and I just met a few people that introduced me to the right people and I found my creative side again and I, re I embraced my creativity. She started drawing jewelry designs, and the women would make the pieces. Nicole brought them back to Canada and had amazing feedback. So she launched a company. Hi, Melanie. It's Nicole from Bamboo Jewelry. I'm Bamboo Jewelry, spelled B-A-M-B-U, is the company Nicole has been building for the last five years. Everything about it, even the name, is linked to Indonesia. 
Nicole sketches her unique designs at the kitchen table, and a team of women she met in Bali turned those designs into earrings, necklaces, and rings. This creative partnership is improving the lives of everyone involved. They're always posting photos of how their lives have changed, and I can see when we first started years ago into where they are right now. As their children are going to school, they have upgraded their homes, now they have their own homes. They're able to fulfill their dreams, and it, we're doing it through jewelry. And that is truly my soul's purpose. I feel happy when I see others blossoming, and that feeds me to continue 100%. Starting her business took time, so Nicole found a job with World Vision to help pay the bills. That made her even more interested in helping people in need. It is my absolute passion to make a difference in others' lives, and this is what has given me the purpose, my purpose. Chelsea Zelizny is a clinical counselor and a keynote speaker at mental health conferences across Canada. She says there is a real impact when someone focuses on helping others. If we want to get actually sciencey with it, we do have a neurotransmitter that's produced in our brain called dopamine. Dopamine is responsible for that blissful feeling that we can actually get throughout our day. Um, it can fluctuate, but there are natural healthy ways that we can increase that dopamine. One of those ways being helping other people. Uh, it makes us feel sort of like this natural high that gives us sort of this like buzz effect that definitely makes us feel a little bit more, I say, alive and a bit more positive. Doing what she loves while helping others drives Nicole to get up every day and keep moving through her ups and downs. She lost mobility in her right leg for a time. Now cognitive issues are her biggest concerns, like memory loss and brain fog. But after seeing the challenges other people face, she's thankful for the life she has. I don't want to paint a picture that it's 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 easy. I'm still sad. A couple days ago, I couldn't stop crying the entire day. <laughs> I was depressed for no reason, just um, feeling sorry for myself. But I pulled myself out of it because we are very fortunate, even though we are struggling. Vision loss, my leg hurts, couldn't remember. Um, one situation or an incident that happened, I forgot it entirely. Um, but this is life. And I know there are people that are not eating on a daily basis, don't have a home, so I feel very fortunate, still. Her own home is where Nicole discovered another activity she enjoys, one much safer than biking, digging in the dirt in her backyard. Gardening um, is amazing for mental health. I always say it's the cheapest therapist. Um, I love being outside and putting my hands in the earth. There's something so soothing about just working with plants. I think I can do it for years to come, hopefully as long as my mobility is still, is still there. This new interest is one Nicole didn't make time for in her old life. But now, picking rhubarb in the morning and wearing high heels in the afternoon seems to suit her new life just fine. Stay tuned, we'll be back with Hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is Hashtag I Got This. Walking into an art gallery that sells bamboo jewelry is a dream come true for Nicole Hoffman. Hi. I'm pretty good. It's Nicole from Bamboo. I have your order ready. Perfect. Yay. So we make silver, gold, brass, rose gold. Uh, we're in about 50 shops across Canada and a couple art galleries across Western Canada. Ooh, I love these ones. Thank you. They're so pretty. Me being um, visually impaired and, and having MS and also helping women in poverty, I think a lot of people really stood behind that and, and supported our company. If I was never diagnosed, I can honestly say I would not have the same passion for life and zest for life that I do right now. I think I would be living in a material bubble and many people who have been diagnosed with MS may disagree with me, but for me, that's the change. MS helped me um, grow and find my purpose and make my soul happy. Sometimes it takes the darkest days before one can find the light. And that's what happened to a woman from Edmonton. My name is Bean Gill. I am 39 years old and I have transverse myelitis. 
So technically it is a non-traumatic spinal cord injury. Um, non-traumatic meaning there was no outside force. Um, it was a virus that attacked my spinal cord and basically left me completely paralyzed from the waist down um, nine years ago. Doctors don't know for sure why this happened to Bean. It's rare. She may have been living with a virus her entire life, but it decided to attack while on a trip in Las Vegas. It was Friday the 13th, and that was the last time that I walked on my own. I remember those four steps that I took. I remember the carpet on the bottom of my feet. I remember getting into the bed with my right leg first. And as I laid down, I just experienced the worst pain I've ever felt in my low back. A couple of minutes later, it went prickly from my hip all the way to my toes in kind of like a whoosh kind of motion. Um, and then I was paralyzed from the waist down. Paralyzed in less than 10 minutes, and then it took many months to diagnose. Today, Bean moves about her house and life quite confidently. After Vegas, she needed help doing almost everything. She lost her mobility, privacy, career as an x-ray technician, and many friendships. Her mental health took a big hit, and she started seeing a psychologist. But even with that help and support, um, you know, I definitely did fall through a depression and I felt very alone. Like, yes, I had my family and I had my friends, but nobody understands what you're going through and they can't unless you're in it. And, you know, I would still go out to restaurants and go out here, go out there, but I would never ever see anybody else in a wheelchair that looked like me. The odd senior citizen, the odd homeless person, but nobody that looked like me. I hated everything about myself. I hated my body. I did not want to live anymore. I just was like mad at God. I was mad at the universe. I was mad at everybody. And I wasn't a pleasant person to be around. Bean had always been an outgoing, active, fit person. Now she was unhappy, gaining weight, and losing muscle. Why did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this, right? And who's gonna date me? She felt lost. It was about seven months later when Bean remembers her mindset starting to change. She was in a rehabilitation hospital, sitting next to a woman who could only move her head. Her mom was feeding her her lunch, and she said, will either of you guys walk again? And my roommates, she's like, well, this bitch will. And we laughed and stuff, right? But I was overcome with guilt, just overcome. And it was the words she said next that changed my life. She sat there and she said, I'd be happy if I could move an effing finger. It was then that I was like, mm, okay, Bean, you're not allowed to feel sorry for yourself anymore, right? And in that instant, I went from thinking, I went from being sad about what I lost to being grateful for what I have. She felt the desire to get healthier, mentally and physically. Bean could always feel sensations in her legs, but couldn't move them. So she spent time at a neurological and activity-based training center for paralysis recovery in California. She started the process of reconnecting her brain to her body. I have to think about each muscle as I contract and relax it. Um, and you know, it is quite a painstaking process, quite frustrating and very, very slow, but it is possible. She saw results and fell in love with the program. It was just so inspiring and I actually felt normal when I rolled into that gym. That was the first time I felt like I didn't have a disability. And everybody in there was like smiling and laughing and you know, there's people of all different abilities and trainers and volunteers and just that energy that I felt. I'll never forget that feeling. And I came back with franchise papers. Bean wanted this program in Edmonton. She found a kinesiology student at the university who was also interested in this type of recovery. Nancy became Bean's trainer. The pair returned to California to learn more. When we came back, man, we went full time. We hit it hard and my recovery skyrocketed. And I was getting things back left, right and center and my connections were firing and I was just so motivated. B knew that there had to be others like her in Edmonton and she wanted to share her newfound enthusiasm. I made it my mission to find people in wheelchairs and create a community because if I felt alone, Guaranteed other people are feeling alone and I know statistically wherever there are able-bodied people there are people with disabilities <laughs> So where are they? She researched became part of disability groups attended functions and started going out with her new friends and wheelchairs People would be like oh my goodness 
what language do they speak? How am I supposed to treat them, right? And, but that's how we break the stigma, is by us as people with disabilities going into the able-bodied world and showing them, hey, we're normal people too. We deserve to eat. We deserve to be out here without people staring, without the stigma. And um, yeah, that's what we've done. Bean also became determined to try new things, to show others what can be done. And for someone scared to swim, scuba diving was a challenging choice. Northwest Scuba holds diving classes for all abilities. With the help of trained divers and special gear depending on the individual's needs, scuba becomes a gentle and inclusive activity that makes her feel equal. You're out of the chair that you're stuck to for how many hours a day. And when you're in water, it's quite freeing. I was actually able to move my legs quite a bit uh, and use my arms and stuff as well underwater. It's been incredible and I'm super grateful for all the opportunities that keep coming my way. Such as winning the Miss Wheelchair Canada pageant in 2018. She's also started a spinal cord advocacy group called Wheels of Change Canada to improve laws and regulations. Bean started living her best life and wanted the same for her new community. It was time to turn those California franchise papers into something real. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is hashtag I got this. Many mornings, Bean Gill stares straight into the mirror and tells herself what she needs to hear. You're strong. You're smart. You're an executive. Positive affirmations keep her mental health in check. She has a poster board of inspirational words and photos. She writes in a journal and listens to upbeat music or people to start each day on a high note. What a beautiful life. The affirmations are quite cheesy, I'm not gonna lie to you, but they really do make a difference. And the days that I don't listen to it, I do notice a difference that, you know, those dark thoughts that are always there, they're a little bit louder that day. Bean has learned life isn't fair or easy, but she has the strength to get through it. And she wanted to give that same opportunity to others. So Bean and her trainer, Nancy, opened their own activity-based training center. Are you laughing? <laughs> push, 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 push. They couldn't have done it without the support of the community, other businesses, and nonprofit groups. They called it Ryu. Ryu Paralysis Recovery Center, reconnect, retrain, redefine. So we reconnect your brain to your body, retrain the nervous system, and redefine what's possible. You can come, you can cry, you can be mad, you can vent, you can do all the things you wanna do, but you're guaranteed to leave in a better mood that you came in in. We really wanna help people increase their quality of life and show people that life is worth living even after you have a disability or even if you were born with it. The need exists as the center outgrew its first space in six months. Now Ryu has a bigger facility with more specialized equipment. It's colorful and bright for all ages and abilities. Helping others feel better about themselves is the true therapy Bean was craving. Thinking back to when I was first paralyzed, I mean, just that first year, con the constant question in my head was, why me? Why did I this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? Why me? And I didn't get that answer for four years. And that answer was so that I could open the center. When you believe in someone, they start to believe in themselves. It's just quite incredible, the will of people, right? Being able to see this and be a part of it is absolutely incredible. And this is why I was paralyzed. This is why that happened to me. Much like Bean, registered social worker Chelsea Zelizny founded her own counseling company so she could support others. Part of that calling came from surviving her own suicide attempt. Chelsea says before you can help anyone else, you have to make sure your own mind is strong. We have to have sort of ourselves grounded and figured out who we are as individuals and our own authenticity and that we seem to be doing somewhat okay. I mean, we don't always have to be perfect and peachy keen to be able to help other individuals. But in my line of work, I wouldn't be able to be the type of counselor that I am if I didn't have most of my stuff together as well. We have to make sure that we're still taking care of ourselves along the way, which might mean reevaluating where we're at, where our own capacity is at, because if we don't, there's a big chance that we can also experience something like burnout. 
Being will likely never fully accept her disability because she refuses to accept limitations. She's already reconnected to her legs more than she thought possible, now using a walker for short steps, like in the washroom, to stand up to the sink and brush her teeth. She works to flex her hips just enough to move her legs, even though she can't put her heels down. Bean says a strong body and mind are one of the same. When I feel physically good, my mental health is on point too. So that's why I'll never stop working out, right? And I've also switched my mindset on it. A lot of people think of working out as a punishment. I don't, I think it's a privilege. You have a body that works, use it. She's the owner, but still a client at Ryu, always working on improving mobility. At home, she can now get out of her wheelchair to lay face down, flat on the floor to stretch and meditate. I still have bad days nine years later, for sure. Nothing is all sparkles and rainbows all the time, but those bad days became fewer and fewer and fewer. And yes, did I think that I was going to walk? Of course. Do I still? Of course. Undeniable, that, is, that will never change. Yes, 100%, I will walk again. When? I don't know. But I'm always gonna try, and I'm never gonna stop trying. Bean's mom and siblings have always been there for her, especially her sister, Tim who has seen the sad times. She's so proud of what Bean has accomplished as a strong East Indian woman. Representation matters. Like, when we see other Indian people, we're just like, okay, we're not alone, right? When you see other people with disabilities, you're like, okay, I'm not the only one. But for a long time, she was the only one that we saw outside in a wheelchair. She's giving people with disabilities a face, whereas we all have like the subconscious bias of people who have disabilities, they should just be like hidden in a corner and like society forgets about them. Bean is doing her best to make sure no one is forgotten. Going through this journey, I've vowed to myself that I won't let anybody else go through their dark days alone because I went through so many and it's not fun. For Bean and for Nicole Hoffman, the feeling of gratification from helping others can fulfill the soul and the mind. Their diagnoses push them toward becoming their best selves, inspiring others along the way. Hashtag, I got this. Narrator, Martin Yap. Video production, Honeycut Studios. Integrated Described Video Specialist, M. Williams. Content Development Specialist, Jim Crisco. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Kara Nye. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, AMI Accessible Media Inc.